pleasure today to introduce Dr. James Chong as our speaker today. Dr. Chong is a field application scientist with Genscript, supporting our customized CRISPR regions and services. James earned his PhD in molecular and cellular biology from Cornell University by studying deoxyurosol incorporation into DNA and its impact on different disease model systems. He then transitioned to Genscript into a cell support and now application scientist role. In his current work, he supports researchers using CRISPR for functional screening, animal model generation, as well as cell and gene therapies. In today's webinar, Effective Gene Editing Using the CRISPR RMP System, James will discuss why should you use CRISPR Cas9 system for your gene editing research and therapeutic purposes, how to choose the appropriate CRISPR and Cas9 delivery method based on your downstream usage, how the CRISPR RMP system of delivery maximizes the CRISPR mediated editing efficiency, and how should you choose the appropriate grade of sgRNA for your desired application. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can submit them by typing them in the question box that you can see on your screen. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the talk. And with this, I'll pass the presentation over to James. Thank you for that uh, wonderful intro, Claire. So good afternoon, everybody. My name is James Chan. Uh, again, I'm a field application scientist here at uh, Genscript. And today I'd like to discuss the benefits of using the CRISPR a uh, ribonucleoprotein or RNP system, and uh, how this uh, CRISPR delivery method could potentially uh, accelerate your workflow. So I just want to briefly touch on uh, the history of gene editing uh, technologies. So the um, evolution of uh, gene editing technologies, really the history of uh, the scientific community discovering better and better endonucleases, uh, which are more specific and also easier to target. Um, while the various uh, milestones in uh, gene editing technology, such as uh, ZFNs, uh, zinc finger nucleases, as well as uh, talons, um, have certainly improved the specificity uh, and ease of implementing uh, gene editing technology, these pre-CRISPR methods um, still all depend on one thing, which is uh, protein uh, DNA binding uh, to target specific genomic areas of interest. Uh, so these systems would have to undergo uh, re-engineering every time you wanted to change uh, the target uh, genomic sequence. So the real advantage of the CRISPR-Cas9 system is that targeting is achieved via Watson-Crick base pairing of the guide RNA, um, which can take the form of the S, uh, sgRNA or cRNA, depending on which system you're using, with your uh, desired um, genomic uh, DNA region. Uh, so this system, the CRISPR-Cas9 system, can be you know, up and running about a week or two after you've decided uh, your genomic target. And so because of the flexibility of this system, uh, CRISPR has really made gene editing uh, an accessible technology uh, for really any scientist, uh, regardless of a, a field or application. Okay. So how does, the, how does the CRISPR-Cas9 system actually work? How does it actually edit a gene? Um, so there are two parts to the system. The first is the uh, Cas9 uh, endonuclease. So this is actually what does the cutting. So the Cas9 endonuclease um, creates a blunt double strand break. Um, and uh, the second part to the system is the guide RNA. Um, the guide RNA actually uh, you know, targets the Cas9 to its specific target. So ultimately, um, the CRISPR-Cas9 the CRISPR -Cas9 system uh, creates a double strand break at a targeted location. And that, that's sort of all it does. Um, from this point, once you have this double strand break, uh, the cell can um, repair this uh, 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 double strand break in one of two ways. Uh, the first pathway is uh, NHEJ, or uh, non-homologous end joining. Uh, in this pathway, the cell will essentially take two uh, double strand break ends like this and essentially just join them together. Uh, this can be a potentially error-prone process, and that can lead to um, indels, uh, indel mutations, which can lead to frame shifts and eventually gene knockouts. Um, the other option is that the cell can uh, undergo homologous recombination or homology-directed repair, HCR. In this pathway, one way or another, the cell will use some sort of template uh, in order to guide uh, repair of, its, of this uh, double-strand break. So if the user were to supply a template, such as a single-stranded uh, donor template, 
then you, uh, then you uh, would be able to induce a very specific mutations such as uh, point mutations or uh, large gene knock-ins. Okay. So depending on your specific needs and your specific limitations, uh, Cas9 can be delivered in one of uh, several ways. Um, and I'll just go over the various um, uh, delivery methods along with uh, their advantages and disadvantages. So the first method is um, a plasmid-based system. So you can either have the Cas9 and gRNA on a single plasmid, as uh, pictured here, or you can uh, have them on separate plasmids. Uh, either way, the, um, the advantages and disadvantages, uh, disadvantages are basically the same. So uh, the main advantage of a plasmid-based system is it's very easy to use. It's very familiar to use. Most researchers are quite uh, familiar with uh, handling plasmids. And of course, uh, the cost is fairly low. And um, because it's a plasmid-based system, you can always uh, you know, keep a glycerol stock, making the uh, system you know, uh, constantly renewable, uh, further lowering the cost. The disadvantage of the system is that the actual gene editing efficiency is not that high. Additionally, um, the off-target effects associated with the, with the system are fairly high, especially when uh, compared to uh, the other methods uh, listed here. So if you're interested uh, in um, a CRISPR-Cas9 system with a higher editing efficiency, a lot of researchers will choose a viral delivery instead. Uh, this is uh, accomplished via lentivirus or AAV-mediated uh, delivery. So if you can produce uh, viral particles, then you can get a fairly high uh, transduction efficiency, and that will translate to a fairly high uh, editing efficiency. Uh, the downside of this system is that uh, you do, because it is viral, you do integrate uh, the Cas9 machinery into the host genome, and that, transla uh, that translates to uh, this system having uh, the highest uh, off-target rates um, uh, of any method here. Uh, also, you have to be able to actually produce these viral particles, and uh, this caveat, the fact that you have to you know, produce these uh, particles, means that um, this is definitely the most laborious of any of the uh, Cas9 uh, delivery options listed. So if you want to retain fairly high editing efficiency, but uh, you want to avoid um, uh, viral delivery for whatever reason, uh, you can go with it a totally mRNA, sorry, totally RNA based system. Uh, you can deliver the Cas9 as an mRNA, as shown here, and then you can deliver the guide RNA, um, which can take the form of the combo CRISPR tracer RNA or the uh, sgRNA. So the advantages here, because it's a totally RNA based system, there, you can uh, bypass transcription, transcription, and that leads to a uh, faster editing event as well as a uh, faster turnover of these components, actually. And ultimately, that translates into a lower off-target effect, a uh, lower uh, rate of off-target effects, uh, while retaining quite a high editing efficiency. So uh, one uh, caveat of the system is that it is actually reported to produce uh, some cytotoxic effects, which is actually a known uh, issue of mRNAs produced uh, by, a, uh, sorry, uh, by um, in vitro uh, trans, uh, transcription. Um, so to get around this problem, you can use our final delivery method. Um, which is the uh, ribonucleoprotein system or RNP system. So this involves direct delivery of the Cas9 protein itself, uh, as well as the uh, synthetic uh, guide RNA. So for applications where you know your cells themselves are quite uh, valuable, uh, such as uh, cell therapy or gene therapy, um, the RNP system really is the most effective uh, method for generating whatever uh, knockouts or knock-ins you might be interested in, and that is because of its very high uh, knock, uh, its very high editing efficiency, uh, its very uh, low rates of uh, off-target effects, and its very low uh, cytotoxicity. And for the rest of uh, the discussion, I'd really like to talk about some of the data we've gathered um, to illustrate this point, that the RNP system is the most effective delivery method for uh, gene editing using the CRISPR-Cas9 system. Okay. So, uh, the RNP system involves, again, a direct delivery of the synthesized Cas9 protein itself, uh, along with uh, the guide RNA. So the guide can take, uh, can take one of two forms. You can either have uh, the combo CRISPR tracer RNA, uh, where the CRISPR RNA, the CRRNA, actually targets uh, the Cas9 uh, you know, to its actual genomic target. Or you can use uh, the synthetic guide, uh, sgRNA, which actually stands for a single guide RNA, 
The sgRNA is essentially an engineered fusion of the uh, tracer and uh, CRISPR RNA. So uh, which of these systems should you use? Um, so the tracer CRISPR combo uh, involves uh, annealing of these two RNA uh, oligos uh, together, uh, while the sgRNA, because it is an engineered uh, fusion, uh, does not require this annealing step. Um, so an additional binding reaction like that, um, this is just another uh, point of failure in your workflow, which um, I think you uh, want to avoid. So we recommend uh, the sgRNA-based uh, system. Okay. So right now, I want to go over some of the uh, literature which has, uh, which has been generated uh, that demonstrates that the RNP uh, delivery method really is uh, the best option for uh, gene editing using the CRISPR-Cas9 system. So this data actually comes from a publication uh, by Kim et al. at uh, Seoul University, where they compared uh, plasma-based delivery of CRISPR uh, to RNP-based uh, delivery. So the first question they ask is, you know, which system has better, uh, higher editing efficiency? So to answer this question, uh, they delivered uh, CRISPR-Cas9 either by, uh, by a plasmid, so the results for the plasmid are shown in the very last lane here, or uh, via the RNP system, which are shown in this red box here. Uh, so they delivered uh, these components into human embryonic stem cells, um, and uh, they measured editing efficiency using the T7E1 assay or the T7 endonuclease assay. So way the, the way that you uh, read this out, the way you determine editing efficiency uh, based on this assay is essentially the intensity of this lower band here. So the more intense this lower band, the more um, editing has occurred. So we can see uh, compared to the plasma-based system, the SGR, uh, the um, RNP system uh, has higher editing efficiency um, overall. So continuing on, uh, actually, with the same paper, uh, these uh, researchers then asked um, which system is uh, less cytotoxic. So in order to answer that question, again, the researchers delivered uh, CRISPR-Cas9 using either uh, the RNP system, shown in red, um, or uh, plasma-based delivery, which is shown in green. And uh, they uh, targeted these three genes, CCR5, CEL, and uh, OPN1SW. And in terms of uh, the readout, they're looking at uh, ESC uh, calling number. So we can see that compared to uh, plasmid-based delivery in green, uh, when you deliver uh, CRISPR using the RNP system, uh, there's, a lot, uh, there's a lot more colonies left. And this is true of all three target genes, uh, suggesting that the RNP system has a lower cytotoxicity overall. Uh, again, continuing with this paper, uh, the authors um, then asked, you know, uh, which of these systems actually has lower off-target effects? Uh, so to answer this question, again, uh, the researchers uh, delivered CRISPR-Cas9, uh, targeting the gene um, EMX1 here uh, via the RNP system or the uh, plasma-based delivery. And uh, in order to look, in order to measure off-target effects, they use um, the T7 uh, endonuclease assay uh, shown in, uh, shown on the left here. Um, but they also do uh, deep sequencing. And I just want to laser in on the uh, deep sequencing results themselves. So for this gene, EMX1, um, we see uh, on-target effects are shown up top and uh, off-target effects are shown below. So the results for the RNP-based delivery are shown in blue um, and uh, plasma-based delivery are shown in green. So what we're really interested in is to look at the ratio of on-target to off-target. And uh, we've actually quantified that ratio for both systems uh, right here. So we can see for the RNP-based method, um, that ratio is 14. For the plasma-based delivery, uh, that ratio is 1.8. Um, so uh, what that means is that the RNP uh, system overall has a lower off-target, uh, a lower rate of off-target effects. And uh, they did um, they did repeat these studies with other gene targets as well, and they saw uh, similar results. So following up on this, um, uh, Kim et al. Uh, then looked at um, possible mechanisms by which uh, the RNP system appears to be outperforming plasma-based delivery in, in basically every way. So to do this, uh, they did a few time course experiments. So the first question they asked was, um, uh, was how, how quickly is editing actually occurring? Um, and, uh, and so in order to uh, look at this question, they delivered uh, CRISPR-Cas9 using the RNP system shown here, or the plasma-based system uh, shown on the right, uh, into K562 uh, cells. And essentially, they just um, 
uh, from this editing essay again um, at various uh, time points. And what we can see is with the uh, RNP based delivery method, um, there are de uh, there's detectable editing at uh, about one hour, um, whereas with the plasmid system, we only see a comparable result at six hours. So there's a, a five hour lag with the plasma based system. If we look at this data another way, if we compare, uh, compare equal time points, so if we look at six hours, we can see that, um, you know, a lot more editing has occurred using uh, the RNP system uh, at six hours rather uh, than the uh, plasma based system. So overall, um, edit, the editing event itself is occurring a lot faster uh, using the uh, RNP based system. So uh, next, the uh, researchers uh, then wanted to see um, what uh, what Cas9 uh, turnover uh, looks like, what the, what turnover of the actual Cas9 uh, protein looks like, um, uh, you know, over time. So in order to answer this question, essentially the um, the setup of the experiment is exactly the same. The only difference is uh, the readout instead is um, is an expression of oh, sorry detection of the Cas9 protein by virtue of its HA tag. And so we can see with the RNP-based system, um, uh, basically the Cas9 protein is, avail is, um, sorry, is uh, detectable right away. And uh, at about 48 hours, it's basically, uh, there's no de uh, detectable expression left. Conversely, with the plasma-based system, there is uh, quite a lag. And I would say that uh, there's a only a detectable expression at uh, about six hours, and then it persists past 72 hours. Um, so overall, what this shows is that um, turnover of Cas9 occurs a lot quicker um, with uh, the RNP-based system, and that translates to a reduced off-target effects. Uh, so one caveat of the study is actually that the sgRNAs used uh, were actually uh, generated by um, in vitro uh, transcription, IVT. Um, again, like I mentioned uh, previously, RNA generated uh, by uh, in vitro transcription, IVT, uh, has been actually reported to produce um, cytotoxic effects. So this is actually data from a follow-up paper by the same lab, where uh, Kim et al. looked at uh, the effects of sgRNA produced by um, uh, by IVT uh, and the effects on uh, uh, cytotoxicity. <coughs> Essentially, what they found was um, uh, that sgRNAs produced by uh, IVT contain a five prime triphosphate, and that that uh, moiety actually induces an immune response uh, leading to cytotoxicity. So I'll just go over some of that data very uh, briefly uh, that uh, Kim et al. Uh, generated. So um, essentially, um, uh, the authors uh, harvested some CD4 positive T cells, uh, electroporated them with the RNP system, uh, with, a, with, a, with sgRNA targeting the gene CCR5, and then um, uh, they uh, looked at these various biomarkers uh, of immune response. So these uh, these three readouts are various biomarkers of immune response, OAS2 expression, DDX, DDX expression, as well as uh, IFN uh, B1 expression. So when they introduce um, the uh, ribonucleoprotein system with the sgRNA produced by uh, in vitro uh, transcription, we see that there is a, uh, this increased expression of all three uh, biomarkers. However, when they enzymatically remove this 5' prime triphosphate using the uh, enzyme um, half intestinal uh, phosphatase, what we see is that uh, this, uh, this immune response is basically reduced to baseline levels across the board. So ultimately, uh, the lesson to be learned is uh, you want to use sgRNAs that do not contain a 5' prime triphosphate to avoid this immune uh, response. And uh, GenScript actually produces uh, chemically synthesized uh, sgRNAs that do not contain uh, this 5' prime triphosphate, so you don't have to worry about uh, uh, this immune effect. Okay. So hopefully I've demonstrated um, the advantages of the RNP uh, system. It's mainly because you are delivering exactly the components you need, that is the Cas9 uh, protein itself, the sgRNA itself directly. Um, ultimately that leads to the system having the highest uh, editing efficiency, very low off-target effects, and uh, very low cytotoxicity. And um, I'd also like to mention this is a very uh, easy system to implement. You're, you know, all the components are truly ready to go. And uh, of course, this, ha this ha also has the advantage of uh, this option being a non-viral option. So in what sort of scenarios would this system um, be right for you? 
So if you're looking for a simplified workflow, if you really want to reduce uh, labor associated with reagent prep, um, this is especially true if you have like a screening, like a CRISPR screening uh, application in mind, uh, where if you have a lot of gene targets, you really want to uh, reduce the labor associated with gene prep, uh, with a reagent prep per gene target. Uh, second, if you have a time-sensitive project, which really is every project, um, and that is because uh, because the system has such a high editing efficiency, uh, you can really reduce the optimization time on your end. And lastly, if you have an application where you're concerned about off-target effects or uh, cytotoxicity, so some examples that come to mind, uh, of course, are uh, gene therapy or cell therapy uh, applications. Um, so for these uh, reasons altogether, uh, GenScript has really invested in developing products and services around the CRISPR RNP ribonucleoprotein uh, system. Okay, um, so GenScript uh, GenScript offers all the components of the uh, RNP uh, system. We really are a one-stop shop for all your uh, CRISPR needs. So we have the Cas9 protein itself, uh, the sgRNAs, which I'll talk uh, talk more about a little bit uh, after this and uh, whatever knock-in templates uh, that you uh, might be interested in, whether it be a SSDNA, DS, uh, DNA, or a template-based system. So um, GenScript has actually launched two new uh, sgRNA uh, service lines uh, and that I'd like to talk a little bit more about uh, right now. So the first is um, our easy edit sgRNAs. So these are our uh, desalted sgRNAs. So this is great if you have an application like a CRISPR screen in mind. So I'd like to go over some of the main benefits, the major benefits of uh, the service line. So first, um, the easy edit sgRNAs are uh, ready to use. Because this is the sgRNA system and not the uh, combo CRISPR tracer system, you can, uh, you can avoid that annealing step. You can avoid that you know, extra uh, uh, labor, that extra point of failure in your workflow. Uh, second, uh, again, we are producing the sgRNAs for you, so you do not have to do uh, IBT in vitro transcription on your end, uh, which, which is a process that can take something like four hours. And um, right, so uh, you can avoid uh, that uh, laborious step on your end. Okay. Uh, second, our easy edit sgRNAs have a high knockout efficiency. So this is um, uh, some of our internal data actually, looking at editing efficiency uh, in our easy edit sgRNAs uh, versus those produced by the traditional method, which is uh, IVT. And um, we uh, we looked at several gene targets across two cell lines, HEC293 cells, as well as JERCATs. And overall, we see the easy edit sgRNAs um, outperform the IVTs in terms of uh, editing efficiency. Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, our easy edit sgRNAs are flexible at scale. So in terms of diversity and quantity of sgRNA, we really can meet whatever needs you have, whether it be you know, a single gene knockout or a massive screen. And we do have a dedicated discount structure uh, for um, bulk ordering. Okay. So the second service line um, that uh, we are launching is actually our safe edit sgRNA. So these are our uh, HPLC purified uh, sgRNAs. So this service line is ideal if you have an application such as uh, gene therapy, or if you are going to use CRISPR in an animal model. Um, and uh, again, I'd just like to go over um, some of the main benefits of our uh, safe edits. Okay, so first, um, uh, our safe edits have a minimal impact on cell viability. Uh, again, these are HPLC purified, so we guarantee greater than 90% purity. In terms of QC, we do ESIMS to guarantee uh, less than 1% mass variation. This is some of our internal data again, looking at uh, cytotoxicity, uh, comparing uh, you know, cytotoxic effects of uh, our SURE edits versus uh, sgRNAs produced by IVT. And we, uh, again, we um, targeted several genes. And what we see is that um, compared to the, those uh, sgRNAs produced by IVT, there's a lot more cells left with, um, uh, when, when uh, these, sorry, there's a lot more cells left uh, when uh, the deliver delivery method of choice is uh, sure edit sgRNAs. So overall, our sure edits have uh, decreased uh, cytotox cytotoxicity. Uh, additionally, we have several um, add-on QC options. So uh, if you, you know, depending on whatever your application requires, um, we can we can certainly add these um, 
add-ons. Uh, second, our um, safe edits uh, allow for minimized uh, off-target effects. So our, um, our again, uh, these uh, safe edits are H HPLC purified. That removes the uh, presence of truncated sgRNAs, which can uh, induce off-target effects. So this is just an analysis, uh, analysis of uh, purity uh, of our safe edits versus our competitor S, our nearest competitor. Um, so we can see that um, our sure edits are greater than 99% purity, whereas competitor S, their sgRNAs are 42% of purity. And so with, with our high purity, um, with genstrip type uh, higher purity found in uh, our safe edit sgRNA, you only need a minimum quantity of sgRNA to achieve a very high editing efficiency. So for example, we recommend 100 to 200 uh, picomoles of sgRNA per million cells. Uh, whereas if you were to use a less pure sgRNA, you would need something like 2000 picomoles um, uh, to achieve the same result. Uh, and again, I'd just like to reiterate, again, we're a one-stop shop. So we really do have um, all, the, uh, all the reagents you would need for your, um, uh, your CRISPR workflow. And our reagents are designed to work together. And uh, because of this, um, we can off, we can provide you with a streamlined communication uh, process, so we can um, have discussions about you know your uh, projects and you know how we can help you accomplish your projects as opposed to uh, just buying parts from us. Uh, so at this point, I'd actually uh, like to mention uh, one additional service line, which is actually our knock-in templates. So in addition to um, our double-stranded uh, DNA templates as well as our plasma-based templates, we also have uh, long single-stranded uh, DNA templates. Okay. And if you are interested in a workflow that uh, requires a knock-in template, um, uh, single-stranded DNA templates have been shown to have uh, the highest editing efficiency and the lowest uh, uh, rate of off-target integration when compared to uh, double-stranded uh, DNA fragments or plasma-based uh, templates. Literature also shows that uh, single-stranded DNA uh, has has lower cy cytotoxicity when compared to uh, double strand DNA, making it uh, um, making it ideal for uh, use in either uh, primary cells or stem cells. So at Genscript, we actually offer um, single stranded DNA in up to 20 microgram quantities. We ensure that there is no detectable uh, double stranded DNA, and lastly, the final product is a Sanger sequence as well as uh, tested for purity by a gel gel electrophoresis. Okay, so at this time. I'd like to mention um, our current promotion, actually. So uh, now until May 15th, uh, you can claim one free uh, sgRNA. So if you're interested in the RNP system, I would highly encourage you um, to, uh, to claim this offer for uh, one full, uh, fully customizable, modifiable, easy edit sgRNA. So you can use this uh, URL uh, below, or uh, if you've signed up for this webinar, then um, we'll send you a, a follow-up email with more details. And uh, that will conclude my talk. Thank you. Thank you, James, for the wonderful talk. Now we'll start our Q&A session. Please type in your questions in the question box if you haven't done so. Thank you. Okay. So the first question we have is, um, is the virus transduction of the high efficiency is associated with the high transduction the editing efficiency is associated with the high transduction efficiency for virus. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, the the um, it is the yeah it is because you can get such a high transduction efficiency um, that um, you get um, such high editing efficiency. And the second question is, uh, why would you choose Cas9 over Talens to bioengineer cells? Um, so again, so like. Um, Talons are talons are uh, definitely more difficult to engineer, and in terms of reprogramming Cas9 uh, for whatever gene target, whatever new gene target, um, it's a lot less uh, work on your end. So we're talking like, again, like I said before, uh, you know, a, a turnaround of like one or two weeks for the Cas9 system, and it can be done uh, for you know in a very cost-effective way as well. So the actual change you need to make. Uh, with the Cas9 system is uh, only the guide RNA, so like 20 base pairs. And the next one is, uh, 
What is the best method to detect off-target in cells or animals? Yeah, that is tricky. That is very tricky. Um, there are there is software which can tell you like um, the uh, predicted off-target effects, like you know where you where you would anticipate off-target. So you can go in and uh, sequence those. Um, you know the other you know the other method is of course you can do you know NGS that kind of thing. So it's certainly that is an area where I think the the sort of field needs to um, definitely agree upon a method in order to uh, detect off-target effects. The next one is, um, what about scale-up process using CRISPR-RMP? Can RMP be used in animals or humans? Um, yeah, so in, in terms of human cells, like we're talking about using them uh, for T-cell therapy. Um, so that is a, a human use case, so definitely. And um, uh, I, you know, for, these are actually the ideal um, sort of scenarios where you want to use them where your cells themselves are quite valuable, such as animal cells or, or human cells, as, um, as opposed to, you know, like in the sort of basic research when you're using cancer cells, you know, you can get away with a sort of dirtier transfection or something. So yeah, definitely um, mouse and uh, uh, mouse and human cells are totally fine. There's in fact an RNP based method for generating a mouse knock -ins that's well established. I believe it's called the Easy CRISPR system. Um, which is uh, uh, readily available online. Oh, another question is, um, how does Cas9 create the double-stranded breaks? What is happening chemically or physically? Uh, so there are um, two uh, nuclease domains. Um, I forget the names of them specifically. Um, but uh, yeah, there are two um, yeah, nuclease domains which uh, cleave each strand. And uh, in this case, cast, uh, the Cas9 uh, ultimately creates a blunt double strand break. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's the best I can offer you right now. Sorry about that. Uh, another one is, uh, does the RMP have an intrinsic fluorescence? Does the RMP, um, so, um, Yes and no. So we do offer um, a Cas9 that has uh, that is a uh, fused to a, a eGFP. Um, so you can you know purchase that from us. You know the, um, we also have a Cas9 that does not have um, a, G, a GFP. So uh, you can you can have either or. The next question is how much does it cost to purchase two uh, nanomolar of sgRNA? And for uh, sgRNA, the easy ad actually starts at only $99. Uh, we're having a free promotion, as you see, so you can claim a free sgRNA easy ad sample uh, by the uh, end of next week, actually. Um, another question. If you have a CRISPR target, which is equal to a possible off target in the cell genome with a different uh, of just the PAM sequence, will that be added to? Um, so if if there's a if the one without, um, hold on, give me one second to think about this. <laughs> Let's see. Um, the one without the PAM sequence should not be edited. So the PAM sequence is uh, critical uh, to the editing event. So you should be um, you should be uh, safe. In fact, like um, if you are doing a, a knock in workflow, um, for example. Um, where you're trying to knock something in, um, we advise you if it if it's at all possible to silently, um, you know, change your PAM sequence in, you know, if uh, if possible. So um, yeah, if there's no the one without PAM, there should be it should be safe. Yes, let's see. The next one is, um, do sgRNA in both lines have chemical modifications for stability? Yeah, they do have um, these modifications. So um, both on the five prime and three prime ends, um, they uh, the default modifications are the um, the, uh, the two prime O methyl and also a, a phosphoro uh, thioate modifications. This increases uh, stability and uh, protects against um, uh, endonuclease attack. So I have a hard question. What's your sgRNA compared to other companies' sgRNA? For example, how would another competitor ask uh, SGRI compared to yours? 
So I think uh, James have shown the data uh, that our purity, we have a safe added as GRNA actually, which has the guaranteed purity of more than 90%. So we definitely have a upgraded version uh, that where the competitors only have a purity of about 40 uh, to 50 percent of the purity so um, that's something we distinguish our service line from and also uh, pricing wise right now we're doing a promotion and uh, i think we are also very competitive in that sense as well another question how do we deliver cas9 protein into cells is there a selection step after cas9 expression Sure. Uh, so if this is about the RNP system, uh, then uh, you should not need to do any sort of selection. And that is another a big advantage. You should have a very high knockout or a, a whatever editing efficiency without needing to do a selection. And again, that's what makes the system so good for uh, either animal models or uh, cell therapy applications. Um, another one, can RMP-based system be used with CPF1? That is a good question. I'm not sure about that. Um, I think you would have to um, purchase the CPF1 protein and then uh, order the get RNA that's suitable for the CPF1 because I think the scaffold design, the lens and everything in terms of sgRNA for Cas9 and CPF1 is very different. Um, so yes, you can still deliver CPF, CPF1 protein and get RNA in a ribonucleo protein format. Uh, yeah, it's just using different reagents and design, essentially. Um, another one, how to deliver RMP in vivo? Um, so we do have a, a default um, uh, transfection uh, sort of um, uh, guideline um, uh, available online. Um, yeah, so it should it should be no different than uh, any other uh, system. Uh, Claire, do you want to add anything to that? Oh yeah. So for RMP, there basically there are lipid-based transfection methods, uh, where just that's how you transfect um, plasmas, or there are micro injections or electroporations. Oh. Uh, and also nanoparticle based delivery. There are several different ways people use it. More depends on the model you're working with, it's like a cell line, the embryo, or is it like in vivo injection, etc. Um, so there are a lot of questions about delivery. Um, what is the best delivery method used? Electrophoration or transformation? Um, I think. Um... Uh, electroporation seems to be um, the ideal method um, in terms of uh, efficacy. Um, uh, although, if you um, have a specific, you know, cell line in mind, or sorry, uh, whatever cell type in mind, then I would encourage you to, um, you know, uh, scour the literature and see if uh, anybody has um, performed these experiments because the RNP system is gaining traction. So more and more, it's very possible to, um, uh, you know, uh, find uh, appropriate papers. And another question, any comments on the stability of RMP complexes maintained in solution? So in actually we, oh, yeah. James, please go ahead. Oh uh, no, go, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so actually we're, um, because the sgRNA essentially is an RNA, even though there are uh, terminal modifications to ensure stability, we still recommend you to make them uh, fresh and do the duplex or form the RMP a priori before use. So uh, we do not recommend to store a substantial amount of the reagents in your freezer in any kind of solution uh, for a long time, just uh, to maintain the activity of the complex. Um, another question, let's see. Does GenScript work with gene editing in plant cells? So currently, I think we sell the CRISPR RMP reagents, and we do have customers we know are using them for plant engineering, but um, we do not provide that service, which is engineer the plant cells. And uh, essentially, we don't 
have too much of experience working in plant cells ourselves. Our expertise are more in mammalian cell engineering, actually. Um, some repetitive questions about delivery methods. Uh, another question, why don't you use plasmid? Right, so the plasmid system, um, like I, like I, uh, I discussed, there are advantages, of course, um, and namely cost. Um, so um, in terms of editing efficiency, actual like, you know, uh, editing efficiency, it's not that high. Um, uh, and often people need to, uh, people find they need to do some sort of uh, selection, whether it be, uh, you know, GFP or anti uh, antibiotic selection in order to enrich. Whereas with the RNP system, uh, you do not need to do that. And uh, again, um, I, like I showed with some of the uh, data in the paper, um, the the sort of uh, expression of the Cas9 and the editing are uh, not exactly you know ideal, uh, and you get this sort of lingering Cas9 protein, uh, which can result in uh, increased off-target effects. Another question: Are there instances where using a CRRA traceRNA duplex is more effective than sgRNA method? Right, so I think there is some um, uh, some debate in the literature and the community about which system is better. Uh, I think internally we do have data that shows that uh, our uh, sgRNA um, outperforms versus the CRISPR uh, tracer RNA. Um, yeah, uh, that being said, of course, like you know, every gene um, is a little bit different, and uh, uh, you'll have it is a sort of a test and test and go thing, no matter what. Yeah. Another question. Uh, can we use RMP system to increase expression of endogenous gene rather than knockout? Hmm. To do that, um, let's see. Uh, you I think you to, can. Yeah, <laughs> I think you can. Uh, of course, you can use CRISPR to do not only knockout but also um, knock in to increase expression. Uh, there are D activated like D Cas9 proteins which you can use to uh, manipulate the transcription of a certain gene. And I think there are uh, different protein formats available for either transcriptional regulation or actual gene insertion or knocking out functions for CRISPR-Cas9. James, do you want to add on to that or? Um, yeah, absolutely. So I think that is a, you hit the nail on the head. So like, um... Yeah, you would need a modified Cas9 um, in order to accomplish that. Yeah. So another question for first users of CRISPR: Does GenScript provide technical support, like sending detailed protocol, especially to detect what cells colonies are affected, or how should choose from different colonies? Um, we do provide uh, technical support, and uh, we will cer we certainly help you. You know, especially if you're not familiar with um, CRISPR, we can you know help you design guides and um, uh, basically you know in every step. The colony thing, I'm not, I'm a little bit uh, confused about the question. So um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. So I think um, the customer wants to generate more CRISPR-based now called or knocking cell line, mm -hmm. um, and are wondering how to screen for that positive clone. Is my assumption right? Um, yeah, so GenScript actually have a CRISPR cell line service where um, if you're not unsure about the technique or doesn't want to bother doing it yourself, we can generate an alkyl cell line or knocking cell line for you. But if you do want to try it yourself, we can definitely provide technical support in terms of uh, the procedures um, that we're using. And we have webinars on how to build CRISPR knockout or knockout cell lines on our website as well that you can refer to. And we hope that can help you to establish the method in your lab. Um, another question, which Cas9 enzyme can you best use with the easy edit sgRNA? Um, so right, again, um, we have uh, the Cas9 available. Um, we have, uh, one with an uh, eGFP or one without an eGFP, either one uh, should be uh, perfectly fine for your use case. Um, another question is, crispr guide rna clone only optimized for mammalian system? Has it been applied to 
called uh, gram-negative bacteria? Uh, it's definitely been used in other systems. We've, uh, it's definitely uh, been used in bacteria uh, as well. Um, in terms of the mod, in terms of uh, changing up the system, that's something uh, I'm not sure if you would uh, how you'd have to edit the uh, the actual system. Yeah. So actually, I think our um, proteins and our guide RNA sequences, if uh, like we do the design for you, is more optimized for mammalians. Um, but we do have a um, CRISPR-based bacteria editing uh, platform ourselves, so we can do that uh, for you. Uh, I think we mostly use a uh, plasmid-based method um, for the exact details. I'm not 100% sure at this point as well, but I, I believe it's possible to do. It's just for our RMP system, it's not optimized for bacteria. Another question, can we use this method for base editing? Um, so if you wanted to uh, base edit, again, that is a very uh, different kind of um, Cas9 protein. So that is like highly um, modified. So um, that would require substantial changes. Yeah, another question about um, best method to deliver RMP. Yes, we believe from some papers we've seen electro operation as the most effective method in terms of introducing RMP in uh, cells and also uh, for some in vivo studies. And another question, which is better in plants, RMP or plasmas? James, do you have any I think, idea? Uh, I think they've exposed our, our plant weakness. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> yeah, we know people buy both, but exactly how it worked and the efficiency and everything, we don't really have in-house or data just gave you an answer to that question. Sorry. Um, how big is the RMP in terms of nanometers? That is a very good question. Um, in terms of actual size of the protein, uh, I don't think I have that data. Uh, the, the Cas9 in terms of like uh, structural data, it's pretty well established so that it's just, you know, it's the Cas9. So you should be able to um, I'll find that information online. Yeah. yeah, another one. Can RMP be adapted for now, Ken? Right. So, um, for this, yeah, again, uh, you would need to, um, you know, modify the Cas9 itself. So it's not like uh, ready to go in that way. But, oh, wait, sorry for knocking. Yeah, sorry. Knocking should be fine. Yeah, you can just add a, um, sorry, I was thinking activator. Yeah, for knocking, you should just be able to add um, a, a donor template. Of some uh, of some kind, so single-stranded DNA, double-stranded DNA, or a plasmid-based stem donor. Yes, and then for another one, do you provide RMP assembled in high throughput scale, as in 96 through 384 well format? Uh, we do provide get RNA in a RAID format. We can do 96 well plate. Um, for more 384, we don't have that. Uh, delivery option yet. Uh, and we do deliver, as I said, uh, uh, sgRNA in the array plate so you can further uh, do the, dissolve them and then do the combination with Cas9 protein in-house yourself just to make sure that it's stable and IDP efficiency, everything is fine. But we can also do the uh, deliver in a solution for you if you have special requests. Another one, which parameters of guide RNA impact the editing efficiency? Uh, which parameters of guide RNA impact editing? So I think it's mostly the design of the guide RNA, essentially. Um, and also, of course, the purity and the quality of the guide RNA. Yeah. If you're talking about design, I think the big issue is the danger of off-target, which can be um, which can be determined by online software. Yeah. So another question, since safe added SGRA has shown less cytotoxicity, does it mean we will have more efficiency for knocking potentially? So I think we're still uh, working on gather, uh, gathering that data, like uh, you know how, how efficiently the uh, safe edit performs uh, overall. Uh, Claire, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think um, 
essentially you will have more viable cells for screening for your next step. So um, you can start with probably lesser cells uh, in that sense. Another question, can I make a gene now count IPS clone without selection? Um, I'm not too familiar with um, uh, IPS stuff. The, um, you should be able to use the RNP system without selection. That is the way it's um, uh, intended to be used. But um, I, I would encourage you to um, see what other people have done as well. Okay. Yeah, so I wasn't sure like what the selection meaning like without using a selection marker or like antibiotic selection marker or without downstream screening or selection for a clone. So essentially when people do CRISPR knockout, you will get a pool of cells that's being engineered. And I think you still need to do uh, some selection downstream to pick out the ones that have a desired um, edits that you want. Oh, another question, how much does it cost for your single-stranded HDR template for insertion of a poly-A tail into genome? So if the insertion is uh, short, um, it shouldn't cost very much. Um, I think we actually have more pricing information online that you can check. It really depends on the quantity and the length of the single-stranded DNA template that you want. Um, so yeah, please go check our website, uh, which will contain more uh, pricing, transparent pricing information there. Um, another question. In the NHEJ pathway, what happens in the gene now count? Is there a possibility that there is mutation that's created making the cells to behave in strange manner? Um, yeah, so um, if you mean um, yeah, so when you have NHEJ, essentially the cell just takes two, you know, double strand break ends and just, you know, sticks them together. So, you know, the idea, of course, the theory is like, you know, you can fit, you can uh, have that translate into, um, you know, a frame shift and that will lead to a gene knockout. Um, of course, some people uh, do worry about, um, uh, I think the issue you're touching on is you could have a mutated protein, which has a, a whole other effect. And so to get around that, what people do is they'll actually use two, um, they'll use two guide RNAs to make cuts, like cut out the first exon or something like that. And by doing that, you um, you can uh, create a different kind of deletion, uh, which is again repaired by uh, NHEJ um, still. So uh, that is that is another option uh, that people go with. So um, one more question: What are the physiological changes in cells after gene editing? The physiological changes, um, I, other than, I, yeah, go ahead. I think this more depends on what gene you're editing or what is the target you choose. It really is more molecular biology or your target of choice. Um, if it's supposed to be a vital gene or a lethal gene or things that affects, I don't know, survival, viability, show some certain kind of um, protein encoding gene, then uh, this will be the major changes you want to observe, right, in the cells. Otherwise, we, besides the genome sequences change, we are not expecting to have substantial physiological changes. Um, another question, I think this can be our last one since the time is up. Uh, could the RMP system be applied in mosquitoes? For example, either genes associated with uh, insecticide resistance. That's an excellent que uh, question. I'm sure it could be. I'm not, I am not familiar with um, mosquito um, molecular biology, if I'm being honest. Claire, do you have uh, any input on this? Uh, I haven't really done insects. I'm sure you can. It's just more the design of the, I guess, the Cas9 or also the GetRNA may need to be optimized for that species. Um, and I think, yeah, 
theoretically, I think is definitely doable. Okay. And I think we'll conclude our Q&A session with that then. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar today. Uh, we hope you find this webinar helpful for your research. If you asked a question but we didn't get an answer, we'll follow up with an email. And many people ask if we will share the webinar. Yes, we will, uh, in a follow-up email, share with you the webinar recording uh, link so you can watch it again or send it to your friends. And thanks again for joining Genscript webinar series. Hope everybody have a good day or good evening. And thank you, James, for the wonderful talk as well as the Q&A support. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.